Okay, this is a video dedicated to the use of the Cloud Cumulus, the 018E stamp. This video, I don't know, as all my videos, they tend to get a little bit long. But anyways, we cover some of the things to do with the stamp and to not do with the stamp. There's a, like a whole little background that I did with a kind of a, an intentional blunder, but just to show you, you know, if you kind of stick with that stamp, add a few additional impressions, color in whatnot, you can get a pretty decent little composition out of, uh, you know, your worst um, impressions of that, you know, where I, on this one, I intentionally tried to get a horrible impression and blending going on with this cloud stamp right here, but in the end result, a little bit more tone and whatnot, and it looks fine to me, I don't know. It looks stormy, that's for sure, but anyways, I hope in this video it answers anyone's questions about the usage of this stamp and this, uh, the concepts here that I go into with this, with this cloud stamp here can be applied to any sky imagery as far as the, uh, the blending and seamless aspect of its usage. So anyways, I hope it comes in handy for you. Thanks for watching. Hello and thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. This is a video that's dedicated to the usage of the Cloud Cumulus, the number 018E, 018E. And it's a really good filler image and it's one of the first designs that I came up with for Stampscapes and it's been one of the most used ones by me over the years and various scenes just because of the generic nature of a cloud. You can use it in any terrain. Uh, as kind of a, a main um, kind of sky figure or it can be used as a filler stamp for um, other types of sky imagery to fill in the surrounding areas. It can be used just by itself or it can be used in conjunction with other uh, additional impressions to make a much larger bank of clouds. Okay, Here's some scenes that I've done in past uh, stamping videos here in the series. Um, this one is where this cloud has been used in a very light blue, just in this kind of background area here. This is what I call a, a stamp sketch. It's just a kind of a layout for um, future coloring to be applied. Um, but you can see how the very light um, value that's been used in that uh, light blue can give it kind of a real soft look. Here's another one with a slightly darker blue, but still kind of in that really pale blue um, value and hue. And that's how it can look in that type of situation. Here it is used in a much stronger situation used in multiple values of blue. It's been stamped in basically this blue right here in the kind of the, the center area stamped in a much darker blue. Uh, closer to the perimeter of the image uh, scene. And then, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's been stamped in black in the darkest areas. So there's multiple values here to give it kind of a, a feeling of depth, okay? And that's used in kind of the circular pattern of uh, usage of impressions, okay? Doing like that, okay? And kind of in that same spirit right here, but just using black ink. Um, it's used in this kind of a, I don't know, what you, maybe a U type of uh, impression. So there's about one, two, three, four impressions on this one. Kind of again, that kind of a circular type of a thing. And then here it is used in conjunction with two other sky images, the cloud with sun, cloud alto cumulus, and just to get a little bit of an extra texture in here to get a multi-textured sky, here it is used right around in here, right, one, two, I think twice maybe, it might be over here too, so there's probably one, two, three, four impressions that I can see. Up here it was done with a I think that was just masking, you know. Um, there's textures within that cloud with sun image, but um, I don't know. This is where it's been used right there. Okay, and um, here it is used in a very recent video. 
um, just kind of used on the perimeter like this. Kind of as a framework for this uh, moon right here, kind of a focal point of the scene. So, anyways, okay, there's been a lot of questions that I've had over the years about the usage of this stamp. I've used it in a lot of videos and I've done it in um, sky videos before, but not just as a dedicated video, um, just focusing in on this one stamp. But it's a rectangle, okay, and there's a lot of dense. Um, textures in here to define the kind of this cumulus um, type of cloud, okay? All right, now, being that there's a lot of texture and such, there's a lot of dense little dots that are built up, and there's this um, kind of a oscillation of a kind of a density and um, space within this given area, okay? I mean, if you look at the stamp itself, it just you know, there's so much texture in there, it's really hard to see um, all of the uh, the variation of uh, kind of uh, values that have been defined by that texture, okay? So, what I'm getting at here is there's a lot of dense, condensed textures, so the inks you want to use on this, I use dye-based inks, okay? Now, you, it doesn't mean you can't use something like a pigment ink, you know, like something like this, but pigment inks, just in general, I mean, if you, you know, especially unless you have um, a pad that's been um, used a lot and it's fairly dry, these types of inks are a lot thicker, so you have to be careful about not kind of just puddling up all of that fine texture in there. And then when you stamp it out, it's just one big blob, especially where the dots get a lot more condensed. So, dye-based inks, you know, in whatever brand, whatever line you want to use, are typically the best for this. Um, they're a little bit thinner than, or quite a bit thinner than something like a pigment ink. And they're just, you know, that they're made to... Um, be used with rubber stamps in achieving a lot of um, fine details, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this, okay? We, had, we do have a rectangle here, and I'll show you what to do, and especially what not to do with this stamp right here. All right, now, with this rectangle here, um, especially if people don't um, see how this is used, or they're coming from kind of more of a outline type of image um, stamp usage, and not so much a tonal usage, okay? One of the inclinations to do is to match up edges perfectly, okay? A lot of people don't feel comfortable about overlapping their imagery when it comes to um, scenic stamping for the first time because they're just not used to doing that. They're used to doing careful masking around outline images, okay, where you don't want, you know, outlines to be crisscrossing. You don't want some kind of another stamp running into um, whatever impressions you've already made, okay? But with tonal images, especially scenic stamping where you want the entire scene to be seamless, um, you want to avoid doing something like this, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to match up my edges perfectly, okay? Now I did it there on purpose, but um, just to make a point, but it's still, I don't know, it's blending in okay. <laughs> Now I'm doing this in black just so it's more visible and you can see what's kind of uh, happening here. Okay, this is just kind of laying things out. Um, edge to edge, perfectly stacked. I call this kind of like brick laying, you know, when you're doing uh, stamping. And it's just taking this rectangle and placing it right next to each other, side to side and top to bottom and you get something that looks like this, okay? you'll often get kind of more definitive lines or gaps in between your imagery, okay? And that's not what we're going for. We're going for something, you know, much more natural looking and 
kind of more flowing from one image, one impression into the next, okay? Now here's another example of the clouds. I did this one of the clouds down below and the, you know, the mountain coming from uh, within the clouds to kind of give this, you know, this mountain uh, a feeling of elevation, you know, it's above the cloud line. And then of course I, I sandwiched it, putting you know, some additional clouds in the background. But, okay, that is one thing to not do, all right? Now let me show you another one just from a basic stamping perspective, okay? All right, I'm putting this ink on, and I'm stamping it out. Now a lot of people, especially with wood mounted stamps, but it could be acrylics as well, they want to stamp this out so they're pushing down. You see on my edges, you know, especially these types of stamps that have kind of this hourglass type of shape, you know. They're pushing down on the outsides and sometimes to get a better impression they feel that they need to kind of just press and press and see I'm slightly rocking it, all right? So the edges are going to be much more extreme so that when I go into my next impression, okay, and let's say I do overlap it, all right? Let's see, let me press real hard, all right? See, what you get is you get these really definitive um, overlaps, you know, where you can see the edges where it goes in, you know, from one image to the next, okay? So you want to avoid something like that. Let me do one more. And I'll go up here. Okay, let me get very prominent on that edge. And you get something like this, okay? By the way, I'm stamping this on glossy cardstock. Let's try it on the matte cardstock as well, okay? So doing this, too harsh, rocking it, and whatnot. And you get something like this, okay? All right, I mean, this impression is much lighter than that one, but blocks, bricks in the sky, basically, okay? All right, so let's start from scratch here. When you're doing this, this is what I do. This stamp is about approximately two by three inches, okay? The rubber is a little bit smaller, but that's the size of block this is. When I'm stamping this out, you want good impression, you know, you want firm, you know, um, impression pressure, but I'm putting it mostly in the middle here, okay? If it doesn't stamp out as strong around the edge, that's fine with me because you want it to kind of taper off on the edges where it's going to flow into my next impression, okay? Now here's what I'm doing. I'm kind of uh, overlapping about a half inch or so, quarter inch to I'd say a half inch actually. Okay, so one image went like that one. The next one, I'm kind of slightly changing the angle. Don't change the angle to where it's extreme, you know, where you're going at a 90 degree angle, because then again, you're going to get these harsh angles, okay? So my next impression for this one might be kind of uh, going into it about like that or so. All right, so see, I'll come in over here. I guess it'd be like that much, okay? This part will be going into this one part right here, okay? Right down here. All right, let's see. And re-ink in between your impressions. If I go like that, and then I go for another impression like that, this impression is going to be much, much lighter than the previous one, and therefore it won't blend in, okay? So let's go for it here. I'll blend this in, center pressuring, Okay, and you can't really see, you know, a real definitive line between one impression and the next, okay? And this is using black, too. I mean, if you use a much lighter ink, you know, it'll be even more seamless, although this is pretty seamless, as is with the darkest color possible, okay? Same thing. If I'm building this up, then I can just overlap. I'll probably overlap about this much into the... Uh, top part 
with the bottom part here, okay? So overlapping in this, okay? Center pressuring, firm, but not, you know, super pressured. And you can see where this cloud just naturally blends up into that one right there. And you can just build it up, you know, however, you know, much you want. You know, it could be, a, like I said, just this little bank of clouds coming up from behind whatever your subject matter is, okay? All right, so that is impression pressure, all right? Uh, let's try that again, but let's do this on the matte paper, okay? Now, here's another trick here, okay? I'll stamp this out. Now, matte paper is going to be much more absorbent, so your edges can potentially get much more extreme because it grabs that ink and it soaks in a lot faster, okay? Now, again, this is black, so, you know, the edges can potentially show up much more strong, much more distinctly, I guess you can say, especially if, since we're stamping on white pieces of paper, but even on matte paper, and this isn't a special type of matte paper. It's not coated on the back as far as I know. You know, this is a single side glossy cut. I'm just using, you know, a nothing paper, which is the back of this, you know. And that blends in pretty well. And it's a little bit, you know, I can see where that one ends right there a little bit. But you can just kind of build it up like this. This is uh, done on matte paper with black. Uh, matte papers are going to be more absorbent. So, of course, it's not going to be as stark, you know whatever color you're using, in this case it's black again, as glossy, okay? But still works really well, all right? It has a softer look. Now remember, um, you're not always going to be stamping, you know, this cloud in black or something like that. It could be in a light blue. The light blue could be on the back on the matte piece of paper, and it would be much more subtle as far as where one impression starts and the other one begins, okay? Or where they overlap and then we'll, it should just look like a natural nice bank of clouds. Okay, so pressure, positioning, all right, for good results. Now, here's the ultimate tweak, okay? And this makes it a lot easier. Let's say you're stamping it out and you're still getting some edges, okay? After you ink it up, all you have to do is take a dry paper towel, okay? And I'm going to wipe off, imagine this is the rubber part. I'll kind of wipe off right around here, and I'll be dabbing, I'd say about, I don't know, maybe a good, well, let's start off with the edge. I'll kind of wipe off the edge really good, okay? And then I'll go in approximately a half inch to even as much as three quarters inch, okay? And I'm taking off a lot of that ink around the perimeter. Now, don't give it a hard, you know, line like that. You can do it around the edge like this, okay? So this is what I'm doing like that, all right? But what is that doing? It's making the edge drier than the center portion, so when I stamp it out, okay? Let me just do this in the center so you can see it. I won't have it coming from the bottom of the page, but see how much lighter that stamps out? It just, this is black even, but it just fades out into that area because I've wiped off a lot of that. So this perimeter area of those dots are more like a, a light gray because it's much drier. So every time you ink that up, just give it a good wipe down takes a few seconds, right? You go on, overlap, get equal pressure, and look how seamless that looks, okay? You know, from one impression to the next. You can't really tell where one ends and the other one begins. I mean, I can see it that it's, you know, repeated, but let's do one of those little twirling types of things, you know, those are really fun for um, kind of a your sky imagery to make a kind of a dramatic kind of entry point for, I don't know, light to come into a scene. Okay, now see this? I'm kind of 
changing the angle a little bit. I always have those clouds right there that are illuminated pointing towards my light, okay? So if they're, if light is coming from here, then the clouds will be positioned accordingly. The light is from here, so when I stamp this one out, they'll be pointing at it that way, okay? Uh, watch out for pads that are brand new or just completely re-inked, you know, they were going to be a little bit juicy. Some inks are thicker than others, like a Memories ink, you know, a brand new one. I mean, just about all pads are super juicy, but Memories are kind of thick, you know, in terms of uh, their viscosity. And if, you know, I mean, you can use it with them, um, but just watch out for those brand new ones, you know. And when you're inking up, okay, one of the things to watch out for as well is when you're inking um, up your stamp, make sure you don't kind of squeeze into the pad too much, you know. The way you build up ink on a stamp is kind of light dabbing like this, okay. And what that is is it's building up kind of a little, these droplets of ink on the surface of the rubber and you kind of do it, the more you do it, um, it builds up a little bit more and more, but if you're pressing into your pad, it's going to be squeezing into these little grooves of your um, stamp, you know, I mean, if you looked at it from a cross section, these little dots, each little dot is going to be this little thing that's sticking up like this, and this is the point right there, you just want those little tops to be inked up, but if you squeeze in there, you're squeezing ink into here, in these areas right here, in between, and then when you stamp your scene, this ink in between might get on your paper, so again it kind of looks puddled up in the tight details, okay? You don't want your ink to puddle if possible, okay? Alright, I'm just going to go for two impressions because this is just the outside perimeter right here, but a much more softer look, right? Okay. You can even go for a lighter impression. Let's say this is where the light is. I can go for a lighter impression of the cloud right here. I didn't re-ink it. I've kind of stamped it a few times, but there's a kind of a pale gray impression of the cloud next to the light. So it looks like a an illuminated light, I should say. All right, so that is how you use that. Um, let's try the doing the wipe off on matte. Not everyone likes glossy, has glossy. A lot of people are more used to using some matte papers, so let's wipe this off on the perimeter. Now remember, this is going to be stamped in black, but there's by no means, you know, do you have to stamp it in black? If you have the, the mounted version, it's indexed in black. You know, so some people look at it and they think, oh my gosh, I, you know, I don't want a, a storm cloud. All right. Well, it looks stormy because there's a lot of contrast in it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that these clouds right here look terribly stormy, like an impending, you know, uh, storm coming or something like that. You know, so different kind of uh, emotional qualities, you might say, depending on what value you stamp it in. If I'm doing a, uh, you know, sunset type of thing, then I would stamp these clouds probably in some color that's in the range of a sunset. Um, you know, that spectrum of uh, warm tones. But anyways, here's this impression right here, you know, blotted off the edge, and look how beautifully that kind of transitions off there, all right? Um, you know, it's a little bit lighter than this one, not too much, but you can get these nice, easy transitions, okay? So, so much better than this one right here. Here's my first matte one. And that's, you know, that one's a better impression right there. This one right here, too much ink, too, way too much pressure. And when you use too much pressure, like I said, all that area in between these little, you know, bits fill in. So you don't get as much lighter areas because, you know, those areas between these dots got expanded and it filled in a lot of that detail in there. So it's not a precarious thing. Let me just show you um, the usage of it. And I'm not doing any kind of tricks or something like that. I haven't like trained my, you know, I haven't, you know, I didn't go through like 
cloud calisthenics or anything like that. But um, I'm trying to find a piece of uh, white paper. I might be out of a. Uh, here we go. My stock. Here, let's try something here. Let's do it. Another color here first. Okay, that was the uh, dark blue. How about, uh, I don't know, just for kicks. You saw some of the blue ones out there. But I did. Let's say we have, um, I don't know, some kind of uh, interesting twilight color scheme. <clears throat> Let's go for something like purple. All right. Ooh, this pad looks a little bit whipped. Might be time for a new This pad's probably 20 years old with that old casing on top. All right, this is just a purple. I mean, I don't need to wipe off this, but why not? Okay, doesn't take much time. Violet tone, pale violet. Okay, don't be too gingerly, you know, when you wipe this off around the edge. Some people just go like this. Okay, yeah. like that, and like that. Go into it, you know, a little bit, and uh, dab firmly. Okay. This one I took off a little bit more, and look how that kind of just nicely transitions off into whatever. Open light sky, I guess. Okay. Oh, one of the fun areas to use something like this is that is at the base of things like waterfalls or things like that. You can use it for, you can use it in the sky, but you can also use it as kind of a more whimsical type of touch around, you know, it could be fog or something like that. Um, but I use it at the base of, I don't know if I have a waterfall in my desk right now, but at the base of waterfalls, I might do it in a kind of a subtle blue or something like that, or whatever color scheme I'm working in. And that's really fun. Um, here, let me show you how this might, uh, okay, this is just the crepuscular rays stamp. Or should I do something a little bit more solid, like, um, the, uh, let's do Spiral Galaxy. I, I'm just going to do it in the same color. I, I would hit it with a, oh my gosh, look at my pad here, completely disintegrated. All right, so long to my trusty companion there. All right, you saw it there. First hand, my 20 year old Marvy pen. Look at that, what it left there. Ew. It's kind of a. Kind of a. Kind of not good. That is how a foam pad disintegrates. We've seen um, fabric pads disintegrate before, right? Fabric pads, what you get is those little stringy things on your um, stamps over time. But um, with the foam pad, it'll crumble. I don't see it as a, you know, something like that as a, you know, a quality problem with Marvy. Like I said, that pad right there with that top, I, that top, um, they changed their kind of plastic generic top like this to one that had uh, the sticker on it and that was I don't know after years and then the uh, pads in general have been discontinued since so all right uh, let's go with a different color here let's go with uh, oh, I'll, I'll just stamp it in a orchid I'm looking at my pad I don't want to see one that's kind of a disintegrating again. Okay, but anyways, spiral galaxy. We're looking up at the galaxy through the, uh, you know, clouds. Um, again, 
what you do is you just take your sky figures, you know, whatever they are. A lot of times the sky figures, I mean here is just a moon, but um, oftentimes I put things like clouds around it, like cloud with sun, cloud with moon, you know, whatnot. And I like that because it kind of provides me a little bit of a buffer, but you can just use the cloud cumulus stamp to do, you know, all of the filler areas around whatever sky element you want to do. Or not, you know, I mean, you don't have to have that. I could just stamp out the sky galaxy and like it would be in probably space. You're not going to have all these clouds built around it. Okay, it kind of moves it into more of a kind of a whimsical feel. Boy, that orchid sure looks like the same color as that pale violet. I never noticed that before. It's almost exactly the same. Uh, which tells me, Marvy, when you were doing these pads back in the day, you can still get blank pads and uh, re-inkers, by the way, but I love Marvy's um, manganese blue. It's the number 36, and I wish they had that in pad form, or even re-inker form. I'd take it in re-inker form. They just have it in their, uh, you know, their Marvy brush marker pens, but that is the most beautiful to me, dye-based ink blue there is. It's crystalline blue and very, very bright, but very light in value, too. So, anyways, this is just going around. And, you know, we're talking about a fairly firm image in terms of the solid nature of a lot of the space in here, okay, in the form. But you can take something as airy as this and you can incorporate them together very, very well, okay? And it kind of gives it that kind of interesting feel. Here's a area right here where you can just have some light shining through into some sort of a, you know, situation, scenic situation like this, right? But you can also use that cloud around other types of imagery, whatever you want to use up in the sky. Something like this would be perfect for, maybe if it was a little bit bigger, like for some kind of word stamp, you know, um, whatever it might be. And you just stamp your clouds in whatever color scheme that would fit the spirit of that quote, or whatever you want to, uh, however way you want your um, viewer to feel when they see some, uh, I was going to say scene, but it could be anything, their card or that you give them, so stamp it a little bit darker maybe, I don't know, to me this doesn't necessarily say doom or anything like that, I could color this uh, light blue or something like that still, you know, um, but typically you know, the darker it is, the more contrasty it is. You know, you can bring in some darker tones in there without losing the form of the clouds, okay? Now, you you know, when I start, I, you know, when I do my clouds, I do bring in some extra colors like this. I brought in some extra blues. And a scene like this was warm tones. I stamped the cloud in in browns, probably in reds or whatnot. Then I went over it again with some yellows, oranges, and reds and whatnot to reflect the colors. Um, that that cloud has been stamped in to run those additional colors in there and to make it the uh, the color scheme of a given scene. So anyway, that is the basic use of the cloud cumulus. It's a really good filler stamp. I tend to see that as my kind of ultimate sky filler um, stamp just as the water pattern small is for water and the uh, um, sedge filler is for ground. This is the ultimate filler for sky for me. Anyway, so yes, no. Okay. Oh, okay. Now that being said, let me show you something here. You know how I did my kind of do not do it this way scenes right here. Okay going for really harsh edges. Okay, let's go for these two. Horrible two, way too symmetrical stampings, unless you're going for something, I don't know, 
some kind of like Andy Warhol, uh, you know, uh, version of some clouds or something like that. Let's just take this and I'll show you how you can just kind of uh, go into something like this and blend it out a little bit more. We see these kind of harsh edges in here. Let me just go in and I'll just fill in a little bit more, okay? And let's see if I can kind of just make this cloud area a little bit more. Now it's more dense, you know, because I had to fill it in, but you know, that doesn't look too bad. In terms of, I'm talking about the uh, um, kind of seamless, less um, noticeable. I mean, I can see a pattern here for sure, but it doesn't look like a bunch of rectangles. You know, we, you know what shape that stamp is, it's really hard to tell, you know, now. It's not so rectangular up there. Now this one's going to be a little bit harder because, uh, you know, we have some really harsh impressions in there. Uh, let me see what I can do without, you know, kind of doing the same thing. Now this one I'm probably overlapping an inch into that probably or so. Okay. Yeah, not too bad, not great, but remember, you can also run in some additional tones in there. That'll all blend together just fine. Okay. Let's go into like this one. Okay. I don't see that one's much lighter than that one right there, but still. You know, I could work with that though still. Okay. But anyways, it's not quite as harsh still is. Now this one I would definitely say looks stormy, <laughs> just because the density of everything, okay? All right, now when you stamp out something like that, then keep in mind, oh, your different toning possibilities. Let's just go with this one. This one here was the worst looking, you know, uh, version of, you know, how you want to do that, but you know, here I'm just taking this stylus tool and I'm sponging in some uh, additional gray tones in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to oscillate the use of shadow tone to define kind of a little bit of lighting within here, okay? So just to say, you know, I mean, if you, you had kind of the worst looking cloud impression possible, you know, you can really kind of make something from, you know, your backgrounds. Just kind of give it a chance and allow it to develop into something. Okay, now remember, I, you know, I could still kind of see some areas in my card here that um, was very... Uh, harsh in terms of the edges here. Now, see what I'm doing here is I'm kind of bringing in some tone here, kind of some select areas, but when I say select, it's not like I had some kind of like ideal placement in mind. I just want to keep some of it light and some of it dark, okay? And then when you do that, it makes it look like there's some kind of general lighting scheme working in here, okay? So it kind of gives it a little bit more depth. Like that. Now it looks like maybe these clouds are a little bit closer than those ones. I don't know. Okay. So I, I like to give my edges most of the times, my corners especially, a, a darker value. Okay, like something like this. And then you have something like that, okay? It's a nice kind of background. I don't know what it's for. This is just, you know, taking some... Um, 
<laughs> just a, just general textures, although I do do that sometimes. And uh, let's just throw something over it nice and solid in the form of uh, some trees. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I just want to say that, you know, I mean, if you have kind of a, you know, a not so great looking <laughs> background, when it comes to scenic stamping, if you just kind of add in some additional tones some colors and whatnot, and this is the ultimate um, genre for covering kind of mistakes, weak areas, complete uh, areas of, uh, how should we say it, unintentional um, results, you can still get something that, you know, looks pretty good from it, all right? Let's just take, I'm just going with this um, leafless pine tree. I don't want something too solid. It's something, you know, the scene is already dark enough, so this is kind of just a nice little kind of skeleton-ish of a tree, okay? Let's go for some impressions here. It looks like a definitely a storm kind of coming in. Okay. Tell you what, let's use some of my versifying ink. This one's much darker at times than the Marvy. The Versafine, I don't know. I don't know about that one for the cloud. You can try. That one's a pigment ink pad, but you know, it is what it is. It says it's very fine in terms of the uh, the impression quality. So, eh, I don't know. It may or may not work with the cloud as well. And well, I think it'll work, but I just I'm not quite sure of the ease of uh, usage. Okay, you might have to be careful, a little bit more careful about the impression pressure. Actually, that worked out, too. Those Marvy impressions are a little bit lighter than the Versafine, so the Versafine makes it look like it's a little bit closer to you. Oops, I think I wiggled this. It's so juicy of a pad ink. Okay, see that right there? These ones are the Versafine, so that one's the Marvy, so it looks like it kind of sets it back a little bit farther visually. All right, so anyways, you get these trees running across in there. I don't know. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. One of the fun things to do on like a black and white scene like this would be to, to do a little color tinting, meaning that when this dries, go back over it with a little bit of tone, you know, into those clouds, give it, I don't know, blue tone, purplish tone or something like that. That would really look like a kind of a storm on the uh, horizon, greenish tinge to it, you know, it might give it something kind of a a little bit off, you know. All right, so that is the cloud cumulus stamp and its usage, all right? Overlap, firm, but not overly firm. Impression pressure, nice flat impressions. Don't rock it like that, otherwise the edges get much more extreme. And the best tweak of all in terms of your usage of it, or really any sky imagery that is in kind of rectangle form, blot off the edges and it won't stamp out as dark. Therefore you won't have in the impressions themselves um, a hard edge rectangle shape, okay? So it's perfect to blend in with one another when you don't have that. All right, so anyways, I hope that helps with the uh, people that have it or people that don't and are thinking about getting it. And uh, yeah, it's the ultimate little filler stamp. Okay, thanks for watching.